Republicans last night gave their response to the devolution of policing and justice. What's your reaction to last night's bomb attack? Well, first off, it's not one of surprise. Uh, a blind man on a galloping horse would have seen that something like this was going to take place. And uh, they attacked the, right to the heart of the intelligence service. Well, I have bad news for them. They didn't attack right to the heart of the intelligence service because there's none there. Because if it had been, they would have caught on that an uh, attack like that was most probably going to take place. You know, when are they going to wake up? What's going on in this country is political policing, where they don't want to offend the terrorists. We have well-known IRA men now, the like of McGinn, who is out on licence, the sniper, Carr in South Amma, who's out on licence. There's a few other ones who are top IRA men who are out on licence, who are helping the dissidents. OK, they're not going out and pulling the tricker or planting the bomb, but they're showing them how to make it, they're showing them how to operate. These people were supposed to be put back into prison if they associated in them circles. It ain't happening. Why not? I would like to ask the Chief Constable today, why is these people not being arrested for associating with known criminals? These are modern scum who got the privilege of being released by uh, the Good Friday Agreement, which people were conned into uh, supporting. Now, what happened last night is no shock. And people need to waken up in this country to what actually is going on with the ceasefires. You do raise a very salient point in that on the night at the time when policing powers are being devolved, one would assume that that was going to be the opportune time for distant Republicans to strike. The fact that there appears to have been so little preparation, so little security around such a key installation, it does seem as though somebody has dropped the ball on this one. Uh, does this raise general concerns about the lack of intelligence and the lack of security in Northern Ireland at the moment? It's not a case that they've dropped the ball. They haven't got it. They can't find it. They don't know uh, how to deal with the situation in Northern Ireland. They've lost that much experience through uh, men retiring, people leaving uh, the forces. And they've brought in a new system in here into Northern Ireland through the MI5, which was here, but not to the extent that they are today. Special Branch, during the Troubles, actually refused to give MI5 as much control as what uh, they were looking because they didn't think they had the capability. Now we have MI5 running the whole setup. So, you know, the way things is going, it looks like the RUC Special Branch was right in the earlier days not to give them uh, as much responsibility. But, you know, this is going on in areas like South Armagh, Fermanagh. It's been kept quiet. Different attacks have taken place. They've been played down. In one attack where there was a huge bomb in the vehicle, they actually said there was fuel in the vehicle. They never mentioned the bomb. It's not the men on the ground's fault. It is the actual Chief Constable and Mr Goggins and Sean Woodward. They are putting our lives at risk for the sake of keeping terrorists like Martin McGuinness and Jerry Adams and them in government. Um, William Fraser, you've been very clear and very public uh, in your statements that the skills, the terrorist expertise that are being used in bombs like that we've seen in Hollywood clearly are, is coming from the provisional IRA, from those who have been experienced over the past few decades in making such bombs. Well, there's no doubt about that. This is not something that you get into the local pub and pick up in a conversation while you're having a pint. Somebody has to show you how to do it. And who else but the people that were actually carrying it out this last 30 odd years? There are senior members of the IRA who are also in Sinn Féin helping the dissidents to carry out the two-prong attack. That's what's going on in Northern Ireland. There's a two-prong attack. There's a political terrorist attack and there is a military terrorist attack. We have been attacked from both fronts it would appear that uh, a number of the political parties have understood and have begun to use the same language as you in terms of political terrorism. Uh, both the TUV and the Ulster Unionist Party appear concerned at the lack of involvement they have had in the devolution of policing and justice. Today, MLAs will vote on this issue. What's your message to those parties? Well, first off, I would like to ask uh, the MLAs that's voting on it. With the greatest respect to David Ford, 
This is not personal. Mr. Ford knows nothing whatsoever about terrorism. He will be relying on the so-called experts within MI5 and the PSNA who are actually having to ring some retired officers to ask for their advice because they don't know how to find certain individuals or where they actually live. That's how bad the security is in this, this country at the minute. Mr Ford has never had that, thankfully for him, he's never had that pleasure of coming face to face with gutless mothers who would shake hands with you in one hand and cut your throat with the other. Victims also have concerns around the issue of the failure to properly define what a victim is, the ongoing concerns about de facto amnesties. Many of these issues are now going to be dealt with by an assembly. You appear to have little confidence at the present time in their ability to resolve these to your satisfaction. Well, a couple of things I'd like to ask. We were promised, we were promised that if people signed for the Good Friday Agreement, that they would go in and they would root out these terrorists. Didn't happen. Isn't happening. We were also promised that Sinn Féin IRA would have no input whatsoever into the victims, uh, the innocent victims, what was needed and how they were helped to move forward. They have complete control or equal control over the people they actually created, e.g. the victims. The very people they moored, they're, they're now controlling. It's like putting the Nazis back in a care welfare package for the Jews. You know, it's just unbelievable that uh, that is happening. We were promised that wouldn't happen. has happened. Even that we were promised would happen has not happened. It has been the opposite. And I would ask our politicians, when are they going to stand up? When is some of them going to get a backbone and say enough is enough? What's going on now is weak politics, trying to fight political politics, or sorry, political terrorism, again, uh, political weakness. You know, who's going to win? We keep winning the battles and our politicians keep throwing away the peace. People across the country in a number of weeks will have an opportunity uh, to cast their vote and make their opinion known on a number of issues from the agreement forward. However, you have a singular concern that in many border areas there will not be the opportunity for unionists, for victims, to vote for a candidate who clearly stands against the inclusion of terrorists in government. That opportunity won't be afforded to many people in your area and in other border areas. Well, the first thing I have to say, in the vote for the Good Friday Agreement, the majority of the people that voted against it came from areas that were worst affected. We will not have the chance to vote for somebody who will represent that view. Now, there's something seriously wrong when we can't get a politician to stand in these areas to represent the view that the majority of the people uh, in these areas voted for. And I know in Hollywood and in Bangor and Port Royce and parts of Belfast, they didn't do it. They voted for the Good Friday Agreement and even people in this part of the world because they believed there was a chance. The only chance we have is if the police go in and root these people out and take them out at the hilt. No matter what it takes to do that, the political will needs to be there. And if our politicians can't do that, sooner or later our people will push them out. Believe it or, ble or they better believe it. That if they don't stand up and be counted, it may take five years, ten years, but sooner or later they'll pay the price where they'll be on the dole.